We'll have some general tips for you on screen right here that apply to all Team Go Rocket battles, but this one against Giovanni, some people, you know, when they go up against a Persian with Scratch, for example, it's a lot harder for them, but if you go up with a, against a Persian like this, it's got Faint Attack, really, like, the GOAT right now is Scrafty, you know, it's gonna be Dark type as well as Fighting type, and so both of those actually resist Dark, Faint Attack is a Dark type attack, and I would say that the most common question that I'll get, that's usually how do you tell, right? So, like, Scratch, you're gonna see and actually hear. You're gonna hear like a lot of scratching. Like, just imagine what a cartoon scratch sound is like. But then you also see a bunch of the slicing and dicing scratch marks in front of your Pokemon kind of by its head. Faint Attack is a little bit less detectable by like visual cues, but they also both have an audio. And you're also gonna notice the pattern of damage is different. You know, scratch is gonna be a lot more of that very small damage, but it's gonna come very, very quickly. Just fast and furious. Whereas Faint Attack, it's kind of that more one and done blunt force damage that hits a little bit slower, but like I say, you know, really any of your fighting types is going to be really good against faint attack, and so I've shown plenty of times how to defeat a Persian with scratch just on the channel in general. We've got a video only about the Persian if you're interested in that. The key here with Scrafty was power up punch. We are going to actually have a Scrafty right now because we're doing this challenge against Giovanni. We're beating him with Pokemon below 1000 CP. Are you kidding me? Part of that is going to be just at this level having two charge moves. Moves. Scroll down to your Pokemon's page and click on new attack to get two charge attacks. I think if your trainer level wasn't as high as mine, like this account that we're using is level 47, and so the team go rocket, their Pokemon are higher or lower as we showed earlier. Text on screen said, it'll scale up and down with your trainer level. So because I'm a little bit higher, you know, like if I was level 30 or something, maybe I could do this without having two charge attacks on my Pokemon. But you see that Scrafty, we're just chaining this power up punch as much as we can, and we also did an acid spray when when this Garchomp came in, so that was not very effective, right? It doesn't really matter. What we were looking for was that debuff, and also, of course, the benefit of using a charge move just in general, whether it's Team Go Rocket using it against you or you using it, is that they are gonna stand still. And it's for about three seconds, so that's like valuable time, right? You wanna be over generating that energy for that charge attack, so even if you have the energy enough to send one out, it doesn't matter. If they're standing still, don't fire it off yet. You know, wait for them to get out of that stagnation period and and notice we didn't want to fully charge that weather ball right here on a9 if your opponent is hanging on just by a thread let's say again you want to take advantage of that stagnation time and that's how you can win when you're below the great league or even below 1000 cp like look at this we're taking on a reggie rock that's 14,000 plus and like our pokemon are all below 1000 that's crazy and so the other part is obviously using type advantages right so you want to be dealing super effective damage wherever you can but i think more important is resisting so right here we're going to use acid spray once again. That's because it's a guaranteed debuff. We did it to Garchomp earlier, but like I say, you're gonna be guaranteed to make the opponent's defense fall right here, so not very effective. That's fine, but look, defense harshly fell. That's kind of invaluable, to be honest, but also Bubble Beam, Power Up Punch. These were all moves that they have a guaranteed either buff or debuff to your opponent, buff to you. And so in this case, of course, Bubble Beam, it's gonna guarantee lower the attack, so we'll see that here in a second. That's all gonna pan out right there. Attack fell, and so so as I've been saying the whole time, let's just chain these together. What that means is like we're gonna kind of have a spammy move combination. We have a fast move that generates a lot of energy per hit, even if it doesn't do a lot of base damage on its own, although counter, I would argue. But then we have these charge attacks that don't really take that much energy to fire off, right? So it's kind of nice because we're doing that like wonderful combination of just spamminess. And look at this, Regirock, it's not gonna move like at all. We can do two bubble beams. It's gonna try to actually attack us, but the animation will just play and the damage won't actually go through. So we can actually get two bubbles off right here with our Jellicent. The equivalent with uh, Scrafty earlier was three counter attacks. So we're almost done here. We're actually gonna get a little bit close. You're gonna even see the timer without Surf right now. Like that would not be possible, I think, with this Jellicent. So we really did need a little bit more power. Bubble Beam was just the initial thing that we had to use to lower the attack of that Regirock. Outlast through this fight and look at that. We still had like six, seven seconds. We done defeated this fool. If you do need something a little more practical, a little less challenge-y, please click an end screen on screen, see the full playlist for Giovanni, and thanks for viewing.